Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. The 21st NASA Extreme Environment Mission Operations got underway July 21st in the Florida Keys. NASA astronauts Reed Wiseman and Megan MacArthur are part of the international crew of NEMO-21 aquanauts performing research during the 16-day mission, which takes place about 60 feet below the surface of the Atlantic Ocean in the Aquarius Habitat, the world's only undersea science station. Simulated spacewalks are designed to evaluate tools and mission operation techniques that could be used on future space missions. NEMO-21's objectives include testing a mini-DNA sequencer similar to the one NASA astronaut Kate Rubens also will test aboard the International Space Station and a telemedicine device that will be used for future space applications. The mission also will simulate communications delays like those that would be encountered on a mission to Mars. NASA's Ground Systems Development and Operations Program has reached the halfway point in retrofitting Kennedy Space Center's Vehicle Assembly Building with work platforms. The platforms will provide workers with access to the Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft during pre-launch processing before their first test flight in 2018. Five of the ten levels of platforms now are in place inside the iconic building. Installation of the rest should be completed by spring 2017. Engineers from Armstrong Flight Research Center and Langley Research Center were on hand at a small airport near Pismo Beach, California for the arrival of the Technam P-2006T that will be converted into NASA's X-57 aircraft named Maxwell, the first manned X-plane to feature a distributed electric propulsion system. The event signifies a large step toward NASA's goal of developing and validating technologies that will make aviation more efficient, quieter, and more environmentally friendly. We'll update the progress of the work and testing of the all-electric powered X-57 on future episodes of This Week at NASA. NASA's Origins Spectral Interpretation Resource Identification Security Regolith Explorer, or OSIRIS-REx spacecraft, is scheduled for launch September 8th to retrieve a surface sample of the near-Earth asteroid Bennu. One of the science instruments aboard the spacecraft, the OSIRIS-REx Visible and Infrared Spectrometer, or OVIRS, uses visible and near-infrared imaging technology to find areas of the asteroid potentially rich in organic molecules. The science team will rely on OVIRS to identify possible sample sites of high science value. OVIRS works in tandem with another instrument, the Thermal Emissions Spectrometer, or OATS, which images in the thermal infrared. Using both instruments enables the spacecraft to map the entire asteroid over a range of wavelengths that are most interesting to scientists searching for organics in water. Astronaut Chell Lindgren was one of several NASA representatives at Comic-Con International July 21st through 24th at the San Diego Convention Center. Lindgren and others participated in several activities and panel events, including a discussion about mobile gaming being used to inspire and educate future explorers and NASA technology. NASA also teamed with representatives of Star Trek to mark the 50th anniversary of the television and motion picture franchise and to discuss its influence on the infinite possibilities of space exploration, including NASA's journey to Mars. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov. twan